Hey, it's Clay, CPATMyWay, CPATMyWay.com. I am here today to discuss the topic of your CPAP running out of water in the middle of the night. For years, people have messaged in on the YouTube channel here and uh, through follow-up and feedback after using their CPAP. Then in the middle of the night, they wake up dried out and the CPAP is out of water. They have to refill it in the middle of the night or they have to do without throughout the rest of the night. And it's a big pain. In the past, we said, you know, there's not a whole lot you can do. You can have, you know, wake up and add the water. You could add a room humidifier to your room to try to help. Um, but all of those answers kind of stunk. Finally, it struck me the other day that you actually do have a resolution to this and it's been in existence for a long time. Uh, it came to me when I started thinking about the old ventilators we used to do and the humidifier we used externally for those ventilators is designed to, to work in line and add extra humidity. So I thought, let me reach out to Fisher and Paykel and see if this would work in this situation. They gave me the thumbs up on it and we've tested it out. It's, it's worked wonderfully here. So we're gonna discuss that with you uh, here today. It's the HC150 external humidifier from Fisher and Paykel and it works in line with your CPAP to help add in humidity. All right, so in this video, we're gonna go over a couple of things. Um, why this is happening to you, you know, what, what room conditions and CPAP conditions are, are causing the CPAP to run out of water how to uh, resolve it with that external humidifier, how to adjust the settings on that external humidifier and your CPAP to make sure that you get proper humidification without rain out, and some things to keep in mind when you're using this because there are some important factors that um, are gonna be added into the mix here. As always, if you appreciate the information, we really appreciate the thumbs up. If you have any questions or additions or commentary, throw it in the comments below. I do my very best to get back with everybody. And if you uh, want more information like this, always uh, follow and subscribe. So let's start off with uh, just the whole overview of what's going on with your CPAP running out of water, right? So this is the Luna G3 uh, CPAP. And, and much like almost every CPAP these days, if you look at this, it has a built-in um, heated humidifier. So it's integrated to the CPAP. With this one in particular, you know, you fill it with water. I think this holds like 320 milliliters, something like that, three, 400, something like that. Um, and it will heat that water so that when the air passing through the CPAP passes through the humidifier, it picks up a good bit of that humidity and delivers it through to you to keep you from drying out. Well, in certain room conditions, it will absorb a ton of water, right? So if your room is really dry and, and the, uh, the physics of your room allow for that air to pick up a ton of water as it's passing through, it will um, and so it could run out of water in the in the middle of the night and that does happen to a lot of users so for a lot of people they would turn down the humidity and just try to make do but still kind of dry it out well for those people i now have the resolution it is our hc 150 heated humidifier so this is the kit that comes with it i'm just going to get it out so you can see exactly how it looks all right, so with the HC150 starter kit, you're gonna get quite a few things in the box. So you're gonna get your little adapter tube. It's like a 12, 14 inch tube. These little uh, adapter pieces, a couple of screws, two water reservoirs, and the heater plate for the HC150 here. Um, and then you've got the tray here as well. That's an obvious little thing. The tray is pretty important because you don't want to yank this thing off the nightstand and spill the water into the tubing and you know, have all those issues. So let's start with the tray because there's something important about it. You'll notice on the tray, there's like a little rim here to the side. That rim is built so that you can use um, the humidifier's cool pass over, which means that there would be no heater plate. I don't recommend setting this up this way at all because you could just leave the HC150 turned off and it's going to do cool passover. So I'm going to recommend that right off the bat, you remove this little rim here. To do so, all you have to do is there's some little clips on the bottom here, little release tab things. Pop those loose and then it just pulls right off. Okay. The next thing you want to do is install the heater plate. Um, probably best to do that without the chamber in there. So I'm just going to release, slide that out. And this is where your screw is going to come into place, right? So on the bottom here, you've got a little, um, little screw hole. You're going to mount that to the, uh, or you're going to line that up with the very furthest hole on the, um, on the uh, tray here. So we'll just put that on there. It should line up pretty closely. Yeah. Pop that through. 
it's a Phillips head, so just uh, tighten it up. And that will hold the tray in place, right? So now that we've got the tray mounted, you're gonna hook up your CPAP. It's got the other side here specifically designated so that it'll hold your CPAP beside the heater tray. Uh, obviously, Fisher and Paykel CPAPs are a little more square, so this doesn't fit on there perfectly, this G3, but it's got plenty of room and you could even you know, turn it sideways. Maybe you wanna set it up to where it's coming off differently and you're looking at it. Anyway, do it however you want. As long as it all hooks up, you're good to go. The way you will hook it up though, is you will remove the six foot tubing, most likely six foot tube that's connected to your mask from the back of the CPAP here, right? So this is the outflow. Uh, it should line up the same way with any CPAP. I will point out that this is a standard CPAP tube. If you have a heated tube, like this one does have the heated tube option, you will have to switch to a standard tube. So uh, if you're using a ResMed or Respironics, um, they do have heated tube options and you will have to get yourself up and there'll be a link in the blog here, a uh, link in the description. Um, you have to get yourself a standard tube. It can be slim or uh, or standard size. So anyway, back to it here. You've pulled the tube off the back. You're now gonna grab your little short adapter tube and you're gonna hook it onto the back, okay? It should slide right on there just like a regular CPAP tube would. And from there, we're gonna jump over to the actual tray itself. We're gonna install one of the um, heater trays by pushing down, right? So you just press down, slide it into place. And then we're just gonna remove this little cap here, just pull it off and uh, yank those two sides off. And then you've got an in and an out, right? And so uh, these little adapters make that connection really simple. Just put them right on top here. So this is the short tube that comes out of the back of your CPAP and will go into the humidifier, right? From there, you're gonna take the tube that was connected to the back of your CPAP and leads to your mask, and you're gonna connect it to the outflow of the HC150. All right, and then that will obviously lead to you. So this is the basic setup. The machine is coming um, out the back here, connects into your humidifier, and then will run to your CPAP mask. This holds like 400 milliliters of water. So you're gonna more than double the water capacity that you have for the system. So uh, let's go from here into how we're gonna manage the settings for this particular um, unit. All right, so the one thing we're gonna also have to note here is that the HC150 is externally powered. So it's got its own plug, I'm gonna pop that in. And it has its own controls. So the way I'm gonna recommend you start this is is by turning off the humidifier on your CPAP machine, right? So the integrated humidifier should be turned to zero and you should leave this empty. So you'll take your water chamber, empty it out, and then you're gonna go to your menu for this particular one. It's over in the settings menu, it's currently set on two. We're just gonna turn that all the way to off and set that in. So on your AirSense 11, um, 10, Dream Stations, whatever you got, empty the water chamber, turn the humidifier off just to start with. We may go back and turn them on and add some water if this doesn't resolve the issue. The next thing you're gonna do is come to your um, HC150 and put it at the two and a half setting. It can go as low as one or as high as four. We're gonna put it on two and a half to start with. We're gonna do that just because this thing will, it's gonna put in some humidity. And if we can just deal with one humidifier at a time, that's the way to do it. If it doesn't resolve your issue, we'll come back and we'll gradually increase this one. Start at two and a half. So on the front of the HC150, you've got a power button. It does have an on and off. So when you're using it, you will press the little button here. And if you get down close, you should be able to see a little green light on, especially in the dark, you'll be able to see it. That means the heated humidifier is on. I'm gonna caution you, if this humidifier is on, don't put your hand on the tray. It can get very hot. In the morning, you will turn it off again and the little green light will go out. Um, and I would recommend turning it on at night before bed, just as soon as you turn your CPAP on, turn your humidifier on, and as soon as you turn your CPAP off, turn the humidifier off. And then we've got our setting here at two and a half. Let's start off at two and a half. If you notice that you're still a little bit dry, let's just turn it up a notch for the next night, right? So turn it up to three for the next night and then four if you still need humidity. If you've got this thing maxed out at four, and you're still not getting enough humidity, 
you can come back to your CPAP and gradually increase the settings here. So we would then fill the water chamber on our integrated humidifier and we would go from off to a setting of one to begin with and gradually increase. The reason why I'm saying that is because we don't wanna add so much humidity that you get condensation or rain out in your main tubing leading to you. That probably will happen if you max out both of these, you're gonna, you're gonna get some rain out. One thing that can help with that is um, a tubing insulator like our uh, nylon tubing wrap. You can simply wrap it around the, the tube and has a little zipper deal and it helps insulate the tubing and keep that uh, rain out from happening. I would recommend, these are not expensive, that if you're gonna get this, um, this system, I'll, I'll put the link on, on there so it's easy to find. I would, I would add that in as well. It really can't hurt. Um, and it'll do a good job of keeping the, the, uh, the tubing insulated. All right, so before we get to maintenance, because there's obviously gonna be some things you gotta keep up with on this and on your CPAP, if you're using both humidifiers especially, I wanna go over some pointers that you've gotta keep in mind when you're using this HC150. Number one is you can't use it with heated tubing. So I know I discussed that earlier. If you've got a heated tube, before you're gonna be able to do any of this setup, you're gonna to have to get yourself a standard six foot CPAP tube. It can be a slim tube or a standard 22 millimeter. Um, another thing is I really want to caution you not to go overboard to begin with, right? So, you know, start off at that two and a half. You can always increase from there. If you go overboard from the beginning and you drown yourself with a bunch of dadgum water, it's not going to be a good experience. Then you have to dry everything back out and start over, probably a little bit frustrated. So let's start low, work our way up, start independently with the external humidifier only loop in this humidifier if the external one's not going to be enough. And another thing is to stick with your, the uh, the tubing setup that we're providing here, right? So you don't want to end up with like a six foot tube coming off of here, another six foot tube coming off of there. The longer you extend this out, the more chance you're going to have a reduction in your end pressure at the, at the mask. So stick with the short tube. We have those available separately as well. Um, don't, don't come up with your own concoction, please. The other thing I wanted to reiterate is that the heater plate is hot on this. So just like your humidifier heater plate on the CPAP, it can get pretty hot. This HC150 can get really hot. Keep little hands. If you got kids that play with things, keep their hands away from it. Um, and do your best not to touch it yourself as you're, hum as you're um, you know, maintaining it and pulling it off. It's best just to let it cool all the way down before you mess with anything at all. And the final thing I'm going to recommend as, as a thing to keep in mind here is Fisher and Peichel says this whole setup should sit on the floor, like dramatically lower than you. I find that to be, especially like my, my bed height is, I don't know, it's gotta be three feet off the ground, I'm sure. So by the time I've set it on the floor, run a tube up three feet and then over to me, I, six feet's probably not gonna be enough for me to even roll over in bed. So I'm gonna say, um, just keep, try to keep it lower than yourself. They, they say that because if you have rain out, which is a very good probability, and, and by rain out, I mean condensation in your tube. When you're adding this much humidity, there's a good chance you're gonna experience rain out from time to time, if not right off the bat. And remember, adjust the setting down if you get rain out. But if this is all higher than you, the water's gonna to drain to you, right? So like you're wearing your CPAP mask and this unit is higher than you, gravity in turn is gonna let that rain out drain to you and it's gonna be in your mask. So to avoid that, Fisher wants you to keep it lower so that if there is rain out, it just drips back into the humidifier and is reused. So as you're setting it up, keep that in mind. I know that setting it on the floor is not a feasible option. I don't know why they would even suggest it, to be frank with you. You'd have to put your mattress on the floor to make that make sense. But um, keep that in mind, okay? You do probably want to keep it lower than yourself. If your nightstand isn't lower than your bed, you may want to get like a little side table or just keep in mind that you're going to be proactive and making sure that rain out doesn't occur because if it does it's going to splash in the face and that's kind of irritating all right so finally let's talk about some maintenance right this is a heated humidifier just like the one on your cpap and just like the one on your cpap there are specific things you have to do fisher and Peichel recommends that um, you maintain this thing daily right so they're saying that it should be rinsed out daily, air dried daily, uh, the humidifier chamber that is, and it should be washed weekly. They're recommending a uh, one part vinegar, two parts water, swirl it around real good, dump it out, rinse it really good, let it air dry. So you're going to air dry it daily, wash it uh, vinegar and water weekly. I'm also just gonna point out for the sake of this here, you know, when you're maintaining it, this is the part that needs to be maintained. Um, there is no way to open it. 
right? So you're just gonna put a little vinegar and water in there, swirl it around real good, dump it out, air dry it. It will be a good idea to do this weekly because if you don't, once you get some funk in here, it's gonna be hard to get the funk out because there's no way to break into this thing. And I'm also gonna tell you, if you procrastinate and you get some funk in here, go ahead and break out the new one, you know? They're designed to last somewhere between three and six months before they should be tossed. Uh, if you maintain it properly, you'll get the full three to six months out of it. And it, the kit does come with an extra one. We also have these available separately. So if you need extra ones, that's perfectly fine. Just order you another one. So I hope this gives you a genuine alternative to just deal with it. <laughs> that's been the recommendation in the past. Just deal with it. Now there is a reasonable option that's actually designed to work with your CPAP. This is something that was used with the old school CPAPs that didn't have integrated humidifiers, but it's still relevant today. Um, of course, if you have any questions after watching this, throw them in the comments. I do my very best to address it, even if I've got to reach out to the manufacturers and, and do some research for you. If you enjoyed the information and you found it useful, hit me with a thumbs up, share it with people. I hope that it helps a lot of people out there. And uh, subscribe if you want more content like this. Thanks for watching.